Hi everyone. Today I have with me here problem 3.13 and this is leaping the river one. I did a leaping the river two but I actually never knew that there was a leaping the river one so I just decided why not do that today. During a storm a car traveling on a level horizontal road comes upon a bridge that has washed out. The driver must get to the other side so he decides to try leaping the river with his car. The side of the road the car is on is 21.3 meters above the river, while the opposite side is only 1.8 meters above the river. The river itself is a range is is sorry. The river itself is a raging torrent 48 meters wide. A, how fast should the car be traveling at the time it leaves the road in order just to clear the river and land safely on the opposite side? B, what is the speed of the car just before it lands on the other side? Whenever I see big questions, I just immediately lose the ability to read. So that's actually why I like to read them out loud once. Just that it's um, reading something out loud always helps me get the information a little bit better. And um, for this question, we can go ahead and start highlighting the important pieces of information. So we can see that this question is super wordy and confusing. Don't mind my stuttering. So the side of the road the car is on is 21.3 meters above the river, while the opposite side is only 1.8 meters above the river. And the river itself is a raging torrent 48 meters wide. So 48 meters wide. So we can actually draw this out. So let's do that. So if this is, let's say this is the side of the river that the car is on. So let's just say that this is 21.3 meters above the ground or 21.8 meters above or 21.3 meters above the river. And I'm just going to draw a little car here just to the best of my ability. There we go that there's a car. And then the opposite side is 1.8 meters. And it's 48 meters wide, this river. So we're going to say 48.0 meters. Okay, so what we're trying to see is how fast does the car need to be driving so that it can arrive to the opposite side. And we know that this is going to be some sort of projectile motion. And it's gonna be, it's gonna sort of look like, sorry, that did not go how I wanted it to. It's gonna sort of look something like this, right? If this is kind of the edge or the landing pad. Let me just draw that a little bit better. Okay. There we go. So if that's the edge, right, if this is the edge the car wants to um, land on, then that is 1.8 meters high and 48 meters from the original point. And that's the projectile. This dotted pathway is the projectile that the car is going to follow. So, and the reason is that it doesn't go up like this, like our other problems do, is because it's not like the car is, you know, um, driving off of some sort of like angle. It doesn't say anything. It just says that the car is driving uh, off the side of the road. So we're just going to assume that it's zero degrees to the horizontal axis because that's how bridges usually are or broken bridges or whatever or cliffs, I guess. Okay, so let's go ahead and start writing down all the information that we already know. And we're trying to look for VI, right? So we're looking for VI. And we know that because we don't have any y component here, because there's no angle, right? We're just going in the x direction, right? We're just going straight ahead. So we don't even need like vx and vy over here. Well, we can break this down into two components, but vix is going to be some value. We don't know what that is. We're trying to figure that out. But viy is zero. So we can write that down, right? Because it's not like it's going at an angle, it's just going straight in the X. Okay, so then DX, we know that's equal to 48 meters. 
And then we don't know how much time this is going to take. Let's go to our y component side. So we have v i of y. d i d y, the distance in y direction is going to be 21.3 meters minus 1.8 meters, right? And that's going to be, oh, sorry, I actually miscalculated that in my notes. So let me just plug that in one more time to double check. Yeah, 19.5. Worked on 20 for some reason, but that didn't make sense to me. Okay, so 19.5 meters. And then we want, we don't know what our T is, right? And we know that our acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So this is the all the information that we already know. And we're trying to solve for Vix, but we need T. And where can we get t from? We can get time from here because in the y component, we have information, we have three pieces of information and only one unknown. So we can use one of the five kinematic equations. So the one that I'm going to be using, the one that matches all of our variables is dy is equal to viy t plus half of a t squared. And when I plug in my values, so this is going to cancel because this is zero. So we're just having minus, because it, we're going in the downward direction. So actually I should define a coordinate system. So this is positive X and it's gonna be positive Y. Now note how this is 21.3 minus 1.8, but it's 19.5 meters downwards. So we can also say that that's equivalent to minus 19 meters. So we can say this or minus 19 meters. So we can write that down right over there. Minus 19.5 is equal to half of negative 9.8 times t squared. And we're just going to solve for t. So when I solve for t, I am getting... Oh, sorry, I plugged that in wrong. The value that I'm getting is 1.995 seconds, right? And now because we have T, we can plug it back into this simple speed equation. So it's going to be VIX is equal to 48 divided by 1.995 And with that, I get 24.06 meters per second. So that is going to be our answer to part A, right? So how fast should the car be traveling at the time it leaves the road? It should be traveling at 24.06 meters per second. Now the second part, what is the speed of the car just before it lands on the other side? So we know that to do this, we need two components, we need VFX and we need VFY, right? And that's gonna, both components are gonna give us our VF. Okay, so we know what our VFX is, right? Because we're not accelerating in the X direction. The X always stays constant. So the speed's going to stay constant, so VFX is equal to 24.06 meters per second. But I'm going to go ahead and, actually I'm just gonna write down our T that we calculated, so 1.995 seconds. And then our VIX, we said it was 24.06 meters per second. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this part just so that we have more space to do our question. Okay, so our VFX, we said, is equal to 24.06 meters per second. And we're looking for our VF, VFY. Okay, so 
don't we have all the other information pieces of information right over here? So we can just use one of our five kinematic equations. So if this is what we're trying to solve for, we can use this equation. We can use Vfy is equal to Viy plus At because we have our time, we have our acceleration, and we have our initial speed. We're just trying to find out what Vfy is. So when I do that, Vfy is equal to 0 minus 9.8, 1.995 seconds. And with that, the Vfy that I'm getting is minus 9.8 times 1.995. I'm getting 19.55 or 19.5. So we can say that that's 19 or minus 19.5 meters per second. So we want our VFY. We have our VFX. We have our VFY right over here and right over here. But what's our VF? So now we have to use components. So VFX, we know that is, is going to be in this direction. And this is going to be 24.06. And then VFY is going to be downwards. 19.5 and altogether vf is going to be 31 meters per second and so that's the speed just before it lands on the other side if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or send me an email. And um, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm trying to post um, a little more often these days because I have some time. Um, so if you have any suggestions, I'm happy to take up any questions that you send me um, via email or if you want to leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.